This surface is called Gabriel's horn. You can find it by taking the function 1 over x and revolving it around the x-axis. Suppose you wanted to know the volume of this thing. Well, we can look back at calc 1 and just do a volume of revolution integral given by this equation. When we do these integrals, we're essentially continuously adding up a bunch of circles areas. That's where the pi r squared comes in. So what's the radius here? Well, it's simply the function. What do you suppose the bounds of this integral should be? Well, for convenience, let's start at x equals 1. And this is an infinite surface. It goes out forever. So our upper limit of integration will be positive infinity. Now what we have is an improper integral. We solve them essentially the same way we solve regular definite integrals. But we replace the upper bound here, the infinity, with a constant. And then we'll take the limit as that constant tends toward infinity. Take the antiderivative of 1 over x squared using the reverse power rule, and then evaluate using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Plug in the upper value, minus plug in the lower value, then all we have to do is take this limit towards infinity. We'll see that the 1 over the constant tends towards 0, 1 times that pi that's left over is pi. And so the volume of this solid of revolution is pi. That's pretty interesting in itself. But things start to get interesting when we calculate the surface area. Here's the integral formula for a surface area of revolution. We'll keep those limits of integration the same, we'll stick the function itself out front, and then it's square root of 1 plus the function's derivative squared. Now this integral might be a little bit cumbersome to compute, so we're going to cheat a little bit. Notice that that square root part of the integrand is always going to be positive. So if we do a direct comparison, very similar to how we do it with series, let's compare the integrand we have now to the integrand without that square root part. Our original integrand will be greater than this integrand, and so the original integral will be greater than this integral. Fortunately, this definite integral is easier to compute. The antiderivative here will just be natural log x. Again, use the fundamental theorem of calculus, substitute the constant, minus substitute 1, well, natural log of 1 is 0, and we have that 2 pi attached. Take that limit towards infinity and recognize the fact that natural log tends toward infinity. Very slowly, but it gets there. And so the surface area is infinity. Maybe you see the apparent paradox. This shape has finite volume, yet infinite surface area. If you were a painter with a can of paint, you could fill this horn with a finite amount of paint, but yet that paint would not be able to cover the entire inside surface area of the horn. So what's going on here? Well, the solution is realizing that a finite amount of paint can cover an infinite surface area if it's thinning quickly enough. This is very similar to a convergent geometric series. Think of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 half to the n. We're adding up an infinite number of terms, yet they sum to a finite value because they're getting small enough fast enough. This is exactly what's going on with Gabriel's horn, since the radius of Gabriel's horn is decreasing fast enough to thin the pain enough out to positive infinity. If you like mathematical paradoxes, you should click the video on the screen right here. I'll see you in that one.